Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, a platform where you can design beautiful websites and host your online store. All right, so I'm currently filming in pure darkness. I'm in Death Valley in the USA. There's no light pollution here. It's the middle of the night. It's completely dark. Watch what happens when I turn on an infrared light. Look at that. I'm being illuminated by infrared light, and I can't see that light. It's still completely pitch black for me, and yet my camera can pick it up. And that's because the Sony A7S III, which I'm currently filming on, has had a full spectrum modification done to it by Spencer's cameras in Utah. So now my camera can pick up infrared light, which is pretty damn cool. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the two different types of modification you can have done to your camera, the H-Alpha mod, otherwise known as the Astro mod, and the full spectrum mod, otherwise known as the Naked Sensor mod. So we're gonna talk about the differences, the pros and cons of each modification, which one you should get. But first, we have to answer the question, why would you modify your camera in the first place? To answer that, we have to look at sensors in digital cameras. We also have to look at what's going on up in space. So let's start with the sensors in digital cameras. So these sensors are actually capable of recording visible light, UV light, and infrared light. But when we take images with these cameras, they only capture visible light. And that's because camera manufacturers put filters in front of the sensor to block the UV and block the infrared light so that we only collect visible light and our photographs look like what we see with the naked eye because our eyes are only capable of perceiving visible light. Now keep that in mind whilst we look at what's going on up in space. Now space is abundant in hydrogen. It's the most common element and in space there's these huge dense clouds of hydrogen that have been brought together over billions of years of gravitational forces and those clouds get very hot, very dense. New stars are being born which give off these crazy powerful UV rays and there's just loads of energy in these clouds. And the hydrogen atoms absorb this energy, and when they do, the electrons that's orbiting the nucleus jump up into a higher energy state. But the hydrogen doesn't want to be excited. It wants to be stable, and so eventually it releases the energy that it absorbed. The electron drops back down into a more stable state, and the energy is released as a photon of light. And that light has a very specific wavelength, 656 nanometers. And the wavelength of light governs its properties. So that wavelength, the hydrogen alpha light, is actually a form of visible light. It's a deep red color of visible light. Now the problem is, most cameras only record about 15 to 20% of that light. And that's because the sensors, which are blocking infrared light, also block most of the hydrogen alpha light. And the reason for that is because the human eye is more sensitive to green light. So by reducing the amount of red light that falls onto the sensor, we produce images that are more true to what we see with the naked eye. But astrophotographers want to capture that hydrogen alpha light. It's a visual sign that there's a huge dense cloud of hydrogen in that area of space. And so you may have seen in some astro images online these patches of red in the night sky. And this is hydrogen alpha emissions. Could be a nebula, could just be a huge cloud of, of hydrogen gas. But either way, astrophotographers like to capture those huge clouds of red hydrogen gas. And then that leads to two different types of modification. The first is a hydrogen alpha plus visible modification because after the modification the camera captures all of the hydrogen alpha light and the visible light. Sometimes also known as a H-alpha mod or more commonly when people say they have an astro modified camera they're typically talking about this modification. There's also full spectrum modification and it's called full spectrum because after the modification your camera is capable of capturing infrared, UV, and visible light. So it's basically removing the sensor altogether so that you capture all of the light. And that's why it's also known as a naked sensor mod. So which one should you go for? Which one is best for you? 
Now, before you ask, I get my cameras modified by Spencer's Cameras in Utah. The service has been amazing, very fast. The first camera I actually ordered whilst I was in the UK. Spencer has contacts in the uh, United States of America, so he can get cheap cameras, brand new cameras for cheap. And um, my A7 IV was modified by Clarence Spencer, and then it was sent from the US to the UK. And the the amount that I paid for the camera, the modification, and the import duties worked out the same price of a, as a brand new Sony a7 IV from the UK. So with the same money, I could have either bought an a7 IV from the UK or an Astra modified camera from the US. Uh, there'll be a link in the video description down below. So if you're considering getting your camera modified, you can get a discount at Spencer's Cameras and there will also be special speedy treatment for people that use the link in the video description down below. But which modification is best for you? Which one should you choose? And one of the first questions that people always ask is, can I still use my camera in the daytime? And with the H-Alpha mod, with the Astro mod, that answer is most certainly yes. All you need to do is set a custom white balance in camera. And I do that with my Sony cameras by taking a picture of a gray card in different lighting conditions for different custom white balances. And I'll put a link in the video description down below to see how you do that. For other cameras, I'm not sure, Canon, Nikon, you'll have to consult your instruction manual that came with your camera or find a video on YouTube. But if you don't set the custom white balance in camera, your images will come out really pink, red. Um, but you can fix that in post. You can bring the image into Lightroom or whatever raw editing software you use, fix the white balance there, and your images will look pretty much exactly the same as they did prior to the modification. It's just that the white balance settings no longer work. You have to use custom white balance Oops, settings. With the full spectrum camera, some people do use them in daytime. I wouldn't recommend it. The colors don't look great. And if there's a bright light source in the image that it just comes like really foggy, lacking in detail and very desaturated. And I just haven't had a good experience doing daytime photography with a full spectrum camera. Unless you use a filter, more on that in a minute. When it comes to autofocus, you'll have to check with the person modifying your camera. Sometimes the sensor has to be repositioned to maintain infinity and maintain autofocus. Every camera is different, um, but just double check with the person modifying your camera that autofocus is going to work and infinity focus will be pretty much in the same place. But So what are they like at night? Before I get into that, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to host your website or online store and as a happy customer for five years I can highly recommend them. You can have images of your galleries with no compression. You can create blogs and interesting articles that way people can find you through search engines. You can also use your Squarespace website as an online store. It's where I sell my book Photograph in the Night Sky and at the moment my 2023 What's in the Night Sky calendar. And the billing I'm on with Squarespace means that they don't take any cut from the sale, which is awesome. If you'd like to give Squarespace a try, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Allen, start a free trial, set up your website, and once you're happy with how it looks and you want it to go live, use the code Allen at the checkout for 10% off your purchase of a website or domain name with Squarespace. Now, how about using these cameras at night? So with the H-Alpha mod, it's no different to using a stock camera. Just have to set that custom white balance and then your images, your astro images, when you're in a dark sky location, you'll have extra little bits of red uh, where there are hydrogen alpha emissions. So in the Milky Way core, the constellation Orion. And the beauty is it collects an extra 0.5 stops of light. So your images will actually be a little bit brighter and will have a little less noise. The only issues I've had with the H-Alpha mod, and it's the same for the full spectrum, if the moon or the sun is in the frame, you do get this really weird red flare. You can fix it in post by desaturating the red channel. Um, so it's not a huge issue, but it's something that you should be aware of. The other issue I've had is that once it gets modified, you can pick up the light of 
night cameras, so security cameras which emit infrared light will appear in your image and you'll see a light source which you can't see with the naked eye. Again, it hasn't been a huge issue, but I've noticed it on a couple of times. With the full spectrum mod, if there's any light source in the frame at night, it creates a crazy flare. Car headlights in particular have been really bad. The other issue I've had is that when I'm filming myself at night, I sometimes use my smartphone screen to illuminate my face. And the face ID of an iPhone uses infrared and quite often you can see these flashes going off, um, particularly in my most recent vlogs. So I have to be really careful when I'm filming with the full spectrum camera that there's no light source. The other issue I've had is that I think there's an infrared light source inside the optical viewfinder. I think it's this here to detect the proximity of your face to automatically switch the screens. And that gets picked up by my full spectrum camera as well. So I've got to be really careful when I'm filming from behind the camera. And images taken with the full spectrum camera at night without filters are, yeah, they just look awful. The colors are terrible. It's a real weird pink cast and it's quite muted and they just don't look great. But the beauty of a full spectrum camera is that you can use filters. So you can either get screw on filters that go on the front of the lens. Spencer's cameras sell uh, some of those. And there's also clip in filters which can go inside the camera um, on top of the sensor. So you can get filters for H alpha plus visible, which basically turns the full spectrum modded camera into a H alpha modded camera. And you can also get filters that only allow visible light through. So that completely reverts the camera back to how it was when it was a stock camera. And it also allows you to use infrared filters. So there are a whole range of different infrared filters out there. You can use those on a full spectrum camera and do some infrared photography in the daytime. I had a little play whilst I was in Colorado recently. It was actually super fun. I was using the clip-in filters from Kalari and um, I'd like to explore the world of infrared photography a bit more because the images are just so fascinating and unique and they just have this really weird otherworldly look to them. So it's something that I'm looking forward to exploring. The one big issue I have at the moment is that I've yet to find a H-alpha plus visible filter for the full spectrum camera that doesn't have terrible aberrations on the stars in the corners. So using a clip-in filter, for example, especially with a wide angle lens, the stars in the corners just look awful. And the H alpha plus visible filter that screws onto the front of the lens, which I bought from Spencer's cameras, unfortunately causes a green vignette around the edge of the image, which is very difficult to fix in post. Yeah, I was really hoping that I'd be able to use a filter and turn this into a normal H alpha mod camera, but I've yet to find a filter that works with wide angle lenses without causing some serious issues on the edge of the frame. So is a uh, bit of a shame. I'm hoping I can find a filter soon. The huge benefit of the full spectrum mod though, when filming at night, it actually collects an extra 1.5 stops of light. It's super bright. I don't know if you've noticed recently in my Astro vlogs, but the night footage just looks, it just looks amazing. It's so much more brighter than it used to be because I'm collecting 1.5 more stops of light. But I've just got to be careful if there's any light source in the frame or any infrared light source as well. And when I originally bought the full spectrum modified camera, my plan was to film myself with infrared light. That way I can film myself, I can see myself in the vlog, and I can still take pictures with my other camera and it wouldn't affect my image. In the past when I've used a just a normal white light, I'd have to go and turn the light off before I took all my photos. But this way I could just use the infrared light to illuminate the, the video scene and still carry on taking photos. But the extra 1.5 stops of light has been so bright that I haven't bothered using the infrared light yet. I have a, an infrared light from Sony, uh, which you saw at the start of this video. And um, it looks a bit weird. It makes your eyes go black and you look like a, a ghost hunting YouTube channel. Um, but I haven't needed to use it because it's just so bright filming at night with the A7S III 
full spectrum mod. So which one is right for you? Um, if you want to do daytime photography as normal without having to use any filters, I'd recommend the H alpha mod or just the normal Astro mod. You'll get the extra hydrogen alpha light at night, extra 0.5 stops of light at night, and you can still use your camera in the daytime by using a custom white balance. For the full spectrum, I can only recommend it if, like me, you are filming yourself under the night sky, that extra 1.5 stops of light is amazing, or if you want to explore the world of infrared photography. Otherwise, I would just recommend sticking to the normal Astro mod, the H-Alpha plus visible. If I can find a filter that will turn this into a H-Alpha plus visible without those aberrations in the corners, then I'd recommend the full spectrum. But um, until I can find a decent filter, it's tough to recommend unless you want to do infrared photography. So I hope you found this video useful guys. If you did, hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to see some of the images I've captured with my Astro modified camera, check out my recent vlogs from the United States of America. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.